Hi guys, welcome, happy Sunday. Welcome to another Sunday Live with me. Sorry, I had to delete the previous uh, session that I had started online. Um, and that's mainly because I couldn't figure out how to connect back. So that's my bad. So I'm just gonna wait for you guys to sort of trickle in and I'm gonna make sure that I have my my laptop ready where I can see your comments and then I can start my spiel. Okay, there we go. I have everything ready. Um, perfect. Okay, so thanks for joining in guys. I just wanted to touch really quickly on uh, my new venture with Graphy app. I don't know if you guys are have heard about it. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I now have put out teaming with Graphy. I have put out a digital book uh, and I'm starting with the absolute basics of watercolor. So as you can see, this was like part two where we kind of went into painting petals and leaves and kind of practicing before we kind of went in and did something cute and colorful that looked like this. So if you guys have a chance to check that out, please do check it out. Like I said, it's great for people who are just beginning and struggling with uh, mixing colors and getting consistencies correct and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm seeing a couple of hellos. Hi guys, hi Nancy, hi Julie, hi Cindy, Janet, hello, third eye open, hi. Thanks so much for joining. And so let me just get into today's tutorial or sorry, today's painting session. Um, I think uh, it's working out really well if I put out a video earlier on in the week and show you guys a technique. And then for our Sunday time together, we kind of use that technique and enhance on it and create something a little more uh, composed. So this is what I had done for this week's um, tutorial and, and it was pretty much touching on using white space in our paintings for the florals. So florals and also the leaves and I cannot stress how important it is for white space especially for loose paintings because um, there's not a lot of detail and if it's if there's no white space then it looks like one big blob. So as you can see it makes a massive difference we started off with a big bloom like a peony and kind of went off into like tinier ones on the side uh, and then some simple basic florals off there as well. Um, yeah, so we will follow along. Excuse me, I have something. There we go. I uh, will um, use this as a basis I hope you guys have practiced and we can kind of compose something nicer. Today I'm using a slightly bigger sheet. I've kind of divided the sheet so that I can test out my colors on here. I figured this would be a nice routine to kind of get people started into testing um, their colors before they want to put it on. Um, yeah, so for my brushes, let me just get all my ingredients, ingredients, my supplies um, listed before I check comments again. Uh, so I'm going to be using the silver black velvet in the eight, Princeton in the eight, uh, silver black velvet in the four, and then obviously the uh, mop brush in the one. And for colors, I know I used my quinacridone rose from Daniel Smith on here, uh, and then I mixed that up with some violet. And just to sort of give it some variation, you can stick with these colors, but I think I'm going to try and do the nice peach that I got for this one right here. And these peaches slash corals were obtained by mixing my red ochre along with my cadmium lemon uh, from St. Petersburg. And of course, I like the more foresty greens, so we're going to be using uh, a combination of raw sienna, I believe this is, and it's either sepia or raw sienna, but it's like a dark brown, and then I'll use the yellowish green to kind of mix it up and get like a nice foresty green. And this is mainly because uh, now my favorite green, which is I think it's 
I believe that was called uh, green, just green from St. Petersburg. There's a hole and I don't want it to get done. So I'm mixing to get the color that I like. Uh, also, this kind of helps us figure out what kind of colors we can get as we mix uh, instead of just buying the colors ready made. So again, it's another lesson learned, right? I'll also have my cadmium lemon medium handy and obviously there has to be some sort of pink. So we will probably use the English red um, here. I'll keep that there. And just a little bit of blue, just in case I want to make these florals here uh, like a whitish, bluish color instead. And that might complement the orange quite nicely. So yeah, so this is pretty much what I am sort of thinking I'll use. It might evolve, it might not. Let's just see as we kind of start and carry along. So I'll push these out so you can focus on my sheet. And before we start, I just want to see if anyone had any questions. Um, third eye open. Do I see if someone tags me on Instagram? Yes, I do. Uh, but it's only if you tag me on the images um, as opposed to the, the actual comment or the description of the image. Um, so if you tag me on the image, I get notified. If you just mention me in the comment, I don't. Um, in your description, that is. What else? Um, Yes, that's true. Um, if you tag me in your post, um, if you are, if your account is open and not private, then again, I'm able to see it. Otherwise, it's kind of um, like I, I'd have to be following you or you need to be public for me to see it. But OK, I think I got everyone's questions and everyone hellos. Hi, Anita. Welcome. Hi, Maria, Deborah. OK, great. So let's begin. So I have my water ready, I have my paper towel ready, and we're gonna start off with the big blooms, uh, which is these ones right here. And then we can kind of go off into the leaves and the smaller, exactly like how we did it there. So let's begin. Uh, I know for the tutorial I used my Princeton. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be using my mop brush just because I have a larger space to work with and I kind of like using this one more than the Princeton 2. Hey Jill, I see you now. <laughs> I didn't see you before. All right, okay, so I'm gonna mix some colors. Let's just, in case this is still a little bit damp, I'm gonna take the sheet off. Um, and like I said, we're doing the ochre. No, uh, what is this again? This is the red ochre, that's correct. So I'm just gonna mix it off to the side and get some water. And then I'm gonna get some of the um, lemon and mix that off on this side so all of it isn't quite mixed up and I can get different variations off it. And then I'll simply add more water to this area to extend the color. Just washing off some of this so I can get a little more of the lemon without it being pre-mixed because I have it on this. And I'm just mixing some on here. So this way I have three different variations of this so-called lemon. I might use it, I might not end up using it, but this way uh, because this technique is time sensitive and there's a lot of blending, if you pre-mix your colors, then it's easier for you to use maybe two brushes. I know someone, Catherine was mentioning that she couldn't keep up and do the mixing of the two petals quick enough. So this might also help you if you kind of pre-mix your colors and just have them ready on your palette. And then just use two brushes to kind of dip and get variations of color. Um, what else? Oh yes, let me do the green before we begin. And then this way, once again, uh, it is time sensitive because once you do the flower, if you want the green to kind of mix in with the floral, um, you need that to be pre-mixed and ready. So I'm just washing my brush and I am going to um, get some of this dark brown 
and just mix that on this side here. I guess I have a lot of water on my brush so it is not coming as dark. That's okay. And then we take the green and that is the yellowish green from St. Petersburg and it gives me that nice rich green but not too dark kind of like a woodsy green I guess I would describe it as and I'll just add a bit more water there we go so I have my colors pre-mixed and ready to go I'm just gonna wash my brush now push these little puppies aside and we can begin just wiping my area in case there's any droplets off color all right so here's my sheet and I'm just gonna make sure that I am clear again there we go okay so we're using the mop brush to begin I'm just gonna make sure that all the green has been taken off the brush before I start so just like we started with the in the um, in this week's tutorial I'm gonna start off by getting my lighter color first so making sure I got water on my brush and then just getting some of this color that we've mixed putting it down and then I'm going to start off having the floral go this way so this has a lot of water as you can see so it's going to be probably a bigger floral here so I'm going to start off by doing my first two strokes so one pressing down going out and then I want to leave some white space in there two and then you can use the same water to kind of create another stroke on the outside but again leave white space so these strokes are pretty much the kind of strokes you would use to create leaves I'm going to take some of the darker color that I blended and I'm going to do the same exact motion on here and again it gives you that nice little blend it might help for me to take off some of the uh, extra water so I kind of just did that and then I did another one except this time I didn't quite get that white space in between that's okay I'm just gonna do a couple of strokes around it and the strokes around it should be a lot smaller because obviously you don't want this floral to get way too big and now I'm gonna do a couple of strokes coming outward while this is still pretty damp because so these these so these petals will be the ones that are kind of folding outward and we want these this area the connection to be a lot darker compared to everything else so I'm gonna start from here and blend out and do a couple of strokes like this so it's hinted that there's an end to this petal but you don't quite have that right away and I'm just dabbing a couple of the darker orange in this area here as we have that happening uh, then I'm going to do another one on this side and again just a tiny little arc to give you that white space do another one this way and push the color down and then for your mid for your middle petal you could either use extra water or just use the darker orange I think I'm gonna go with the X just kind of washing off most of the color and just getting more water because everything is quite damp here and so when I do my I'm making sure I touch this petal and I touch this one and I'm kind of leaving making it extremely light having the colors flow in from left right and the top and then kind of just adding a couple of strokes on the outside there um, then we'll just kind of do a couple more like this but they need to just be extremely light so don't go dark on your colors and then leave that now we can tackle the top which is the background um, 
petals and for that we want we want that to be in the background so it needs to be a lot lighter than what we have going on here uh, oh before we kind of move on to that let's do the darker orange at this time because it is still damp and it's a good time to kind of make sure that we have like a nice dark to light happening so I'm just dabbing that on here dabbing it on to this area going up as well and then leaving it at that All right, I'm just reading comments. Um, sorry, Julie. Um, are people not able to see me or can someone just let me know? Because I'm just wondering what Julie's saying because I just read the only comment there. You guys can see me, right? I just want to make sure. Let me know. Okay, no one's saying anything, so I don't know. Oh, okay, perfect. Ginger says I can see you. Okay, I'm going to continue. All right, so now we're going to do the top um, petals that go around, I guess, the background petals. And so for that, I'm going to have, I'm going to use a little more control because I don't want it to look too out of shape. So I'm just kind of giving it like a domey look. So I'm filling up the areas very loosely but also controlling so I'm shaping the shape I'm kind of doing it around the shape that I have created for these upper um, petals and then I'm just putting it downward like taking it down and you can just have a couple of them going up make sure you have a lot of that white space that I was talking about make sure it's also quite light if it's too dark just take your brush with just water on it and just kind of wipe off if you don't want it to be as dark and then finally we're going to do the side and again for the side make sure it's light enough and it's not super dark and you just do your arc shape petals exactly what we've been doing this whole time And there we go, we have like our first big bloom happening here. And now um, we want to tackle the um, we want to tackle the hold on, there we go. Just going to make sure that my screen is not refocusing. There we go. Now we got to do the leaves. So for the leaves, I'm just going to take my number eight, some of my pre-mixed color and I am doing, I'm going to do some leaves on this side here first. Oh, that's way too light. And then we're doing, starting from a point up, pressing down and just kind of giving it some shape. And then same thing on this side, but leaving white space in the center and pushing all the color down. And there we go, we have our leaf. I'm just gonna mix more color on the side to do a second leaf. And this one, I'll have it probably coming out this way, just adding a little more darkness to the end of that leaf. So again, I'll do this one slightly smaller, so pressing down, giving it some shape tapering the end with my green and then again leaving some space in between doing the exact shape but for this side and then like I said if you want to do a couple of strokes to kind of have it look like there's white space like this or like that go ahead and do that um, I'm just feeling like I don't need to do that for these here so I'm gonna let that one go maybe I'll do it here just here there we go all right, so we have that done. I'll just do one out very loose and very light. And keep it like that. 
All right, so now we can kind of go on and do some more leaves because while we still have this color on and sort of mixing and like washing it off, let's just do a couple more. This area around here is still damp. Um, so I might try and get some going on here and maybe even prepare for a, a smaller bud. So again, keep in mind the white space and just like that. So I have white space in here. I have white space in the center here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some dark green on here just so it adds a little bit more detail on there or two dimension sort of look and feel. And then I'm going to add a stroke that kind of a stem that kind of emerges from here and I'm just going to add it up here. I want there to be um, a bud so that's what I'm trying to do here without creating too much detail and having it look too worked up. I just want an area where I can create a little bud and then we can kind of pause there. Uh, lastly I'll just do a hint of one here. So you use your discretion and see where you feel you would like your leaves to go. I'm kind of doing what I feel is right based on my composition. I want you to work this and make this your own. I'm showing you techniques, but you don't have to copy me exactly. Just kind of go with the flow, see what you like, what you don't like. What I'm doing is not necessarily what you might want to do either. So keeping that in mind. All right, so then for my bud now, I'm going to try and use the same color. I might not get the exact same color. But for this, we're going to have a little more fun with it because it could be a bud or a slightly bigger floral. So I'm going to start off by doing like a leaf movement, just pressing it down and trailing out. And then I'm going to dip my brush in water, just the tip of it. And then I'm going to do the same movement, leaving some white space in between. Then I want some of the lighter yellow, and I'm just going to do one area, just like that. Trying to keep white space in between again, and try and make it smaller than the middle one that you have. Here's another one. And now I'm just washing off most of the color, and with just water on it, I'm just going to try and create a couple of smaller strokes and pulling from the water that we have on this already. And then just creating a couple of them at the top. Oh, I put my hand on the green. So as I mentioned earlier, if you feel like your blooms are, or the, the uh, strokes are a little too dark, just take water on your brush and wipe off the color. And it should be a lot lighter. That's not an issue. Uh, and then I'm just going to take some of the green while this area is still damp. And just kind of do the bottom of that so you can see that tiny green base of the flower. And again, it doesn't have to be super realistic. This is a very loose style of painting, so it's all about how the colors blend in and how it flows. So just have fun with it and kind of go along. All right, so I think we should stop with this for now and let's do some of the easier bits on the side because I'm noticing uh, <laughs> Uh, people are getting raging blood bats and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so okay, so let's give this a rest and let's do the um, this portion here. 
that we have and it's a lot easier so let's go with the what color did I say I was doing uh, I didn't say what color I was doing for this okay so we're gonna use the violet for this uh, I'll mix some of the violet with some of the blue so I have some of the violet and I'm mixing it with some of the cobalt blue that's what I have and we'll get like a nice delphinium kind of indigo I think let's just see how it turns out and I'm just mixing that off to the side so I want the color to be a lot more potent for the first few strokes and so let's just do a couple over here so we're literally just doing strokes like this so do them in clusters of maybe three right and then keep keep another brush handy and you'll see why and you can kind of have them go bigger down here and then smaller as you go up so do them in clusters of three remember your white space in between give it some flow if you can you can dip and get the color directly from your uh, little palettes if you wish and I'm just going to end off with this one here tinier and then adding some to the side and then with your brush uh, with just water go ahead and create the same movements touching the petals as you kind of create the move the same uh, shapes in between And voila, you get your nice blending happening. Oh, Got to move off all the colors off my area here so you can see better. And as you can see, we, we have this nice method of kind of dark and light, but you can kind of see the shapes and it's just whimsical slash romantic slash dreamy soft, loose, all of those things. If you want to go ahead uh, into what you've done already and kind of touch it up a tad bit, just get some more of the darker color that we previously used and just highlight it in certain areas where it's still damp. And that would give you a nice darker blend as well. But if you're satisfied with how it looks, just leave it as is and just do a couple of dots maybe to kind of give it that loose look. And then we'll be doing a splatter at some point too, so don't worry about it too much. All right, so we've done one here. Um, and then we'll do another one. Let's do another one on this end over here too. Actually, before we do that, what I want to do is take some of the green and just add some, some connecting lines or stems in here. You don't have to again, but it's kind of nice while it is still damp, so you can get it to be uh, more blendy and you've got a nice array of different colors and again because of the white space and the use of one like I guess it's a mixture of different colors but when you have have the green integrated with the blue it kind of gives it a nice feel and adds more structure to your painting again you don't have to do it I like to do that so I'm gonna do that there now for the next one, we'll have it be a lot tinier or smaller, but literally the same thing that we did here. Uh, let's do that over here in this direction, kind of going this way. So again, the same in three clusters, clusters of three, I mean. Uh, you can have some areas of the paint be just the blue and this way you might have a nicer blend. So I put more blue on this one here. And then you 
can go with some which with ha which has a little more of the purple per se, maybe. And just do your uh, keep in mind your white space. Try and keep that in as often as possible. And then finally, we're going in with our brush with just water. And we're going to create the same motion movement that we did previously. And you just kind of want to fill up the space, but not don't overdo it too much because then you don't want it to look like it was overworked. So this is something if you struggle with knowing when to let go, it takes a couple of tries. But again, um, yeah, you, you would need to practice a bit to kind of figure out when you're ready to stop. I still struggle with things like this, so it's not something that just comes easy. Um, especially coming from a design background, I'm always like, less is more, less is more. But you would think I'd figure that out by now. Not really. So just want to do a couple more to kind of fade out. And then pin that there. So now I'm going to go back in with my number four and, and kind of touch up the stems or connect the stems. So mixing some of that green on the side. And I just want a little bit. And just in the areas where I see some white space, I can just kind of connect it, make it look like they're two different sprigs of florals that are happening. And especially while it's still damp, it'll give you that nice blend, especially the ones at the top. There we go. That's that. You can even go in and just add a couple more in areas where you feel could use some. Yeah, so just kind of work that till you are pleased and then kind of leave it. And then we're back to doing the rest of it. So we can kind of, because we got a lot of blue, so my whole idea of creating those lighter blue florals have kind of died. But <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, we can still sort of do the same thing, integrating the green and the brown for the centers, and then kind of just having a hint of the blue to create the white. So this way it still has that nice pop. Or actually, you know what? Let's not do the blue. Let's use the pink. Let's use the pink instead. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by doing the centers. So mixing some of the brown and the green. I'm going to get ready to do the center of these little simpler florals. And I want to create a variation that isn't quite the same green as this. So. I, um, so this is a slightly darker green, which is fine. So we're going to start off by doing, leaving some white space in between and just kind of creating, I'm just going to turn it over this way so then I have a better idea of how it's going to flow. And just creating a circular shape out of dotted lines or dots and just haphazard, sporadic. And then once I have that done, I'm going to use my number eight Princeton and I'm mixing just 
a slight amount of the red Matter Lake uh, red onto the side. Now this is too much red. I want it to be a lot lighter. Oh, I sprayed some on there by mistake. So I want it to be very watery at this point. So I'm going to mix in more water to make sure I get a nice light version of it. And then using the brush, I'm just going to create, touching the insides, I'm going to, I'm going to create light strokes, creating a petal. So notice I'm touching the center. So I'm touching some of the green and leaving white space in between as I do these strokes. Now clearly it's a lot darker. I'm just washing off some of the color and I'm adding strokes again and I'm going to continue doing this all around until I have a full floral. Again, make sure you have a lot of white space in between and you're good to go. So we have one floral ready. Now, if you want it to be a lot more potent and darker, you can either choose to kind of go with the green and dabbing in the center because this area is damp. And this way it increases the amount of green that we have in our image because we've got quite a bit of yellow, orange, and we've got quite a bit of blue. So you can add that green to have it seep into the pink, or you can add more of the pink. It's completely up to you. I'm going to add a tad more, a tad bit of yellow into the center as well. And it doesn't have to cover up the whole area. I just want it integrated in with the green. And leave it at that. So it's simple, easy to do. For the next one, you know, just to sort of see how it looks, let's try, instead of adding green, let's try adding some of the pink. So same method as we just did. I'm going to get some of that green, add, um, make a little circle. So let's do it here. So just a haphazard circle made out of green and then taking my number eight Princeton and just a very slight amount of the pink from Matter Lake Red. I'm going to create petals by just doing a couple of strokes. And it's almost like a hint. You can see the pink only in certain areas. Uh, and there's a lot of like um, white space, but again, you can you can very clearly tell it's a floral. I like the fact that some of the green is mixed in there too, but it adds something nice to the whole image because you got dark and then you have the light stuff. So as I mentioned, let's add some of the pink to the center. Now that we've created that. And again, this will happen if your area isn't quite damp or isn't still damp. So you can see that this technique takes a lot of making sure that your um, the wet on wet is pretty much yeah ensuring that your area is still wet as you go in with another color. But I like how the whole thing works. And so I'm not going to overwork this or do anything different. Uh, I think it's a good learning lesson as we are doing this together as well to kind of be extra aware of things like this. But that's also the beauty of watercolor. Like sometimes you get that effect. Sometimes you get this effect. It's just an all natural look, I guess. It's not intentional. Sometimes it's unintentional, but it kind of creates a nice, pretty picture. So... Don't stress over it. So we'll do a third one. Uh, for the third one, I'm gonna do it slightly facing upward. Uh, and then, so just pay attention to how I'm doing this because it'll be helpful. So because this is a very basic floral, we want this floral to be sort of facing upward. So we're gonna do, instead of a circle, we're making a dotted oval shape. 
and you'll see why. I'm going to add a bit of the brown to my green here. I like to have variations in the centers. They all don't need to look exactly the same. So again, keep it keep it oval shaped as opposed to circular. Okay. Once we have that, I'm going to actually I'm going to use the same brush, get some of my pink but not too much. It has to be extremely light uh, with a lot of damp, so a lot of water. And I'm going to create my petals. So the ones at the top can be your regular petals. Keeping white space in between. And then as we get closer to the bottom, here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of make it shorter and wider, the petals. And this is what works as the perspective and gives you the whole illusion that this floral is sideways. And also the fact that when you create the petals that are lower, they're kind of more to the side as opposed to directly, perfectly in, this, in the right angle. Because again, it's all about perspective. Right, so something like that. And that's pretty much what was done over here as well. So if you want to reference that video from earlier this week, you can absolutely do that. So lastly, I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow centers. Add some yellow, it doesn't have to be covered up all over. Yellow just adds something nice and bright to the whole image, generally speaking. All right, so that's done. And now we can kind of do some of the greenery and add some of the light, um, lighter greenery that will go with it. But let's connect some of these and create some greenery for these little guys first. So I'm just going to add a tad more of the yellowish green to this color. So I'm going to try and get something, a green that's slightly different from, uh, from what we have up there. So I actually added more brown and I have a darker color here. But if I add some yellow to this, I might be able to make it a lot lighter. And I think that's what I had done for this week's video. So just, it's too much of a fluorescent green. So this is a lighter green. I could possibly work with it. It's not my favorite, but. So we'll do these leaves to be a lot longer and kind of flowier. So let's have one flow this way. And again, we're doing the whole leaving white space in between. So we do one stroke, getting some water, do another stroke, leaving some space in between. There we go. And then I'm just gonna wash off some water and create the same strokes here but I want them to be lighter. So that's why I kind of washed off most of the color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create some over here. These are so relaxing to do. quite fun um, I'm just going to do some on this side here I'll do one to break it up between these two and then we can add just one kind of flowing out just gonna make sure you can see yep you can see Flowing out this way and just give it some movement. 
and fade off. And let's just leave that as is. All right, so we have that. And then I also wanted to do the splatter. So last thing that's left is the splatter and these little guys, which I kind of did in the time lapse, but we are going to do this here live. So you can see me do that. So I'm gonna mix some of the brown, which, which I have with all this green happening here, because we don't need any more of that specific green, but we'll get this nice greeny brown and start off by doing something that looks like this. So I'll have one protruding from here. I just need to make sure that it's not damp. Actually, because this is still drying up, I'm gonna give this some time to dry Let's do one, let's do one over here. This will be a smaller one coming out and then I'm just dipping the tip in water and then I'm just kind of doing a dotted motion in what would look like a cone, I guess. No, like a leaf, let's call it a leaf. So tapered at the end lots of white space in between and just kind of making that motion. And then once I have that, I'm gonna take my number eight silver black velvet, just water on it. I'm going to dab away and enhance this look. So obviously do the centers, don't cover up everything, kind of taper off at, towards the end. Um, and as you go outer or outward, just let it fade off into lighter colors. It doesn't have to be dark because we want the darkest in the center and then we want the lightest on the outer areas. All right, and so then we have something that looks like that. And if you wanna enhance the center again, to be a darker color, just kind of go in, add another green, another variation of the green, or you can add the same color, it's entirely up to you. That green was too, too bright, so I just added a bit of brown, and I'm just kind of going into the center, and then just kind of letting, allowing the water to spread and do its thing. And there we go, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So there we have that little guy. And then we'll do one more here, as I mentioned. And so this one, we can have him be slightly bigger. And this one, I'll show you a different method. If we just do, it's the same method, just the uh, amount of space that we use to add the color is different. So instead of doing it in the form of a leaf, I'm just doing it in the direction of the stem. And then going back in with just water and dabbing away. And then using this brush to kind of create that cone shape. Broad at the bottom and tapering at the top. So you can decide which method you like better. Um, I think I prefer this one better because then it's nicer to have just the centers be dark and then everything else is a lot uh, lighter. Especially for this style, I might add. Yep, so there we go. So done that, I'm just gonna add a touch more of the green so it can seep into the areas nicer. I'm just adding a few dots on the outer as well. And there we go, we're done. We're done with that. All right, so we've got these two and you know I like to do mine in threes. So we'll just do one more for this um, and then we'll enhance 
the um, the peony. So I'll do one going up this way. And this one, again, I think I'm just going to keep it very basic because I don't want it to be overpowering. So I'm just doing a couple and then I'm going back in with my brush and adding a lot of water droplets. So it's giving me a nice flow. And I'll let that one be as is. Okay, and now for this one, I just want to do a couple of enhancements to it. Uh, and by enhancements, I mean I'm going to take my number eight print um, silver black velvet and I'm going to get some of the same, the red ochre color that I had mixed with some of the lemon. I need a little bit more. I'm mixing some of that lemon. There we go. And I just want to very slightly enhance the outer front um, petals. And I just want to make sure everything is also dried here. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm going to kind of mimic what I've done previously but I don't want to do too much of it. So I'm going to keep it light. My strokes, I mean, it doesn't have to match entirely as I did previous strokes. Like, so don't go over it entirely, but I just want to give it an additional overlay of color. So you can very clearly see the difference between the bottom, the front, and the back. And then you're adding your bottom strokes as well. And so this technique would be your wet on dry technique. If you want to be technical about it and there we go we have that and I'm just gonna enhance enhancing the inner bit just a tad bit more So you're loosely going over what you've previously done. And then just on the so-called budding flower that we did as well. And there we go we have our finished product. Now, uh, there's one more thing that I would actually do, and that is just adding a couple of loose background greenery to it. Uh, but I wouldn't use a green, I would use more of a, more of a gray. So if you have a Payne's gray, or even like your azure blue, and you wanna just mix that up with some of the green or just by itself, and just get some of the, just get it on either one of your silver black velvet brushes and just kind of do something like this. So that clearly doesn't look very gray at all. There we go, much better. And a lot lighter too. And this just gives you a variation in your painting and adds 
another color for interest, I guess you could say. And another tech, another um, excuse for you to practice your greeneries, your leaves, rather than greeneries. And I'll just do a couple over here. And I feel like this is a bit too dark, so I'm just gonna use my paper towel to kind of Dab that away and then just add very faint light ones over here. It's literally like a hint of green that you can't quite see clearly but it's like hovering in the background. Yeah, so I would use it wherever you feel it's needed. If you don't feel like it's needed and you're good with how it looks, then absolutely just leave it at that. But when I see a lot of color like this, I like to kind of give it an offset of light and dark. Uh, I just feel like it adds a lot more to the uh, end result, but that's me. So yeah, so this is our final product, I guess. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to read the comments to see if anyone had any questions. So let me know if you have any questions now. Um, I'm going to start back where I first ended. So it seems like there's been quite a bit of conversation happening. I like to see this. I like that you guys are engaging. Yeah, so um, I think a lot of people have that issue with uh, working on water and trying to figure out the, the right amount of color and whatnot. So these exercises, that's the whole purpose of Sunday. So we can kind of work together and figure that out because trust me, it's always a learning curve, especially with watercolor. Julie, oh, only for a week. Well, welcome to watercolor. Hope you're really liking it. Oh, Christine has some good tips about um, brushes. It's true. I always end up, uh, when I use my squirrel mop brush, I always end up getting massively huge florals compared to if I use anything else. Um, thanks, Mary. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Batool. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Julie. That's uh, really kind. Yes, actually, it's true. The more you like the video, if you've been following along, uh, the better it is for me. So thank you. Um, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this live sessions. Hi, Lydia. Nice to see you again. Ginger, thank you. Zanette, awesome. Glad you love it. Uh, Marianne, glad you really like this. Hi, Pamela. And uh, Nancy, yes, me too. I also have a, a lot of issues leaving white space, but we're all learning, right? That's why we're in this. But um, yes, hope you guys really liked the session. I'm so glad and honored that you were able to join me. Um, again, this was based off this week's tutorial that we did. Um, so feel free to kind of check that one out as well if you haven't already. Uh, share this video if you guys have found this useful. Send me your work, guys, because if you worked, if you worked on this with me uh, this Sunday, please tag me on Instagram or send it to me on Facebook. I love uh, seeing your work. Uh, you can also, like, if you don't know where the links are, you can find my links to social media in the description below or just on the homepage of YouTube. 
Um, so love seeing your progress and just hearing from you guys. It's always such an, such a pleasure. So yeah, thanks so much guys for your Sunday and have a wonderful rest of the weekend with your family and we will chat soon. Bye.